good morning, y'all. We are at uh, Bulow RV Park uh, in Palm Coast, Florida, and we're going to go over and look at the ruins this morning. Yeah, there's supposed to be a sugar plantation that was here at one time, and so we're going to go see if there's anything left of it to explore. They say there's ruins over there, so off we go. We'll either get footage or we'll get ruined. We are just arriving at the um, Sugar Plantation uh, Ruins, I believe is in the State Park. Uh, Bulow Plantation Ruins Historic State Park. So we're going to go check it out. Here we are at the Bureau Sugar Plantation Historical State Park. And we're gonna go see if we can find some ruins and get some information and some history on this place. Okay, so it's four dollars per vehicle to come into um, Bulow State Park. And uh, we're gonna gonna find out. This is a sugar plantation it was the biggest sugar plantation in Florida at one time and I think what I read was that the Seminole tribe burned it to the ground so we're gonna go find out more about it and, uh, and take a look and see what we see it's in there okay. I'm go look. reconstruction rule that's what it looked like okay. in the day so that's what the um, Bulow Sugar Mill looked like um, back when it was full built and operating. And we got some maps over here to take a look at. Okay, look that. How cool. Yeah. Well, I wish we could get a map to take with us. Let's go around the other side and take a look. Oh, it's the Bulow Plantation House. Oh, wow. It says, uh, this is a representation of the plantation house that once stood here. The house was built in 1821 and completely destroyed during the Second Seminole War in late January, 1836. The house was once visited by naturalist John James Audubon on Christmas Day in 31. Okay. Audubon walked 14 miles from Amala Compa Plantation, located in what is now known as Palm Coast, Florida. Okay, Audubon completely completed a painting of the Greater Yellow Legs Shorebird here in the marsh across Bulow Creek. So, anyway, we're going to go explore a little bit.
Well, we're still walking down the, the nature path and we saw this just incredible tree. It's burnt inside. It's pretty cool though. <laughs> Hope there's no critters in here she's gonna give me. <laughs> that is really cool looking though. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. I'm liking this trail, that's for sure. So much. Yeah, this is a good trail. coming up on the um, the ruins themselves. Wow. Isn't that cool? Oh. Let's see what this says up here. Wow, this is just really cool. Wow, the history. The energy behind Bulow Sugar Mill, running a successful sugar plantation like mine required a lot of energy. Before the 1800s, sugar mills were largely operated by animal power. Horses or oxen turned gears that moved the large rollers used to crush cane. By the time the sugar mill uh, was built in 1831, steam powered mills were available. These provided greater power and allowed cane to be processed faster. Well, this is, this is quite a bit of history here for this part of Florida. Um, they actually use steam power to crush the cane. Such great history, it's... Yeah, it is. Wow, what they did back in the 1800s. It's pretty amazing. You know, when you think about... Um, the 
how long ago this was. I know. What the conditions must have been like, because this was like swampland. Making room. The molasses was still for making them home. They made the molasses for, for making rum. They had to, they had to, all the molasses had to come down off of the sugar and they could save that for making the rum and then the sugar was separate. Yeah, if, if I recall, molasses is actually a byproduct of sugar. Yeah. That's what there's that's what I'm learning here. And of course in this area for the most part the um, adult beverage of choice is rum. <laughs> <laughs> Just a spoonful of sugar. <laughs> Well, this place is kind of amazing. We love history. This is right up our, right up our alley. Sure is. It's it's amazing. All so, these signs are so helpful. Yeah. To understand how it all worked. The grand kettle, proper kettle, Lambo kettle. How they shipped it. I mean, how they Syrup processed kettle, it. Battery kettle, cooling vats location. This is all a processing area right here. Ooh, cane juice. So this was about um, how they fed everybody, huh? Yeah, and they also grew cotton, corn, and rice. Okay. Might not have been ideal, but he provided food for them too. Yeah. And allowed them to grow their own vegetables, so that's really cool. Is this just another whale here? It may tell us right up here on oh, the right. Yeah, well. Oh, well. Exact use unknown. The exact use is unknown. Hmm. Of that particular well. Boiler so and there's machinery. A Ooh, look at cornerstone that. block. Oh, that's cool. Well, so let me get this it. was a compartment for the boiler. And furnace um, it filled the right half of this room. Steam from the boiler was piped into an engine on the second floor of this building uh, to our right. And the engine operated a large gear that turned the rollers to crush the cane. Got that or not. Moving in front of me. Yep. So this was the boiler. Smokestack. That was the plantation or the cane crushing area and steam operation. Boiling the cane, things like that. Smokestack.
So we're walking over now to its interpretive center and restrooms. <laughs> This is kind of a cool building. It's all glass. Yeah. Wow. So inside here, just lots and lots of information and artifacts about the plantation. So in the history of Beulahville, in 1812, on the 8th of June, John Russell and his family came to this place from St. Augustine to claim a land grant from the Spaniards in exchange for a 53-ton schooner. John Russell, a shipwright, uh, a British subject born in South Carolina, built the ship while living in the Bahamas where he went when the American Revolution began. He died before doing much except marking the land by blazing the trees with his initials. The land was then sold to Charles Wilhelm Bulow, a wealthy cotton grower from Charleston on August 1st, 1821. Two years later, he died and left the plantation to his son, John Joachim Bulow. C.W. Bulow wanted to develop a sugar plantation on this land and his son, showing good sense and judgment, built the largest and wealthiest plantation in East Florida. Wow. Well, that Seminole War was... That was nasty. That was pretty gnarly. Talk about hate. <laughs> oh. Well, we're kind of wrapping up our visit here to Bulow Plantation and learned how significant it is. Walkover was beautiful going through the jungle. <laughs> yeah, it was a beautiful trail, and there was so much history, a lot more than I thought would be provided here. So we learned so much, and so glad we came here today. It was a great experience. Yeah, I highly recommend it. And, and you know, if, if you're out camping, it's these places. If you look around and just do a little re research, you're gonna find fantastic places little hidden gems along the way, and this is definitely one of them. This is definitely one of them. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Happy camping! At, At last, last, just us. us. <laughs>